to moderate this thing. Uh, question, yes. Max, uh, maybe trivial yeah. question for you. Uh, one of the most powerful set of algorithms that do uh, random numbers actually take uh, numbers and, and, and do bit fiddling with them. Can we do that uh, with floating point, with the shift left, shift right? Digit fiddling or bit fiddling? Bit fiddling. You can always use the integer modes, of course. Um, the thing has a very a quite good random generator, but all the math stuff and algorithm stuff was implemented by Pauli. So either ask him, okay. or just get to the source code and look it up. Okay. okay. So um, I encourage all of you to make a download not only of the zip file but the release version, which isn't updated as, a, as frequently as our internal development version is. Go to the SourceForge site, get a regular SVN client, download the complete tree, look what we have done, offer um, improvements, and we try to incorporate what we think is good for the project. Okay. 34 ask questions. Let's not get off on that. Jim. Yeah, two, two really minor questions. One is, I noticed that it turns itself off, which is great. It says you can turn it off too, but I don't know. If it doesn't mention in the manual how long it, the default is for it to turn itself off. The second question is: I heard that there's still at least one whole mighty bit left in the RAM. <laughs> May I suggest, and it's just a weak suggestion, that the possibility of an auto turn on function be implemented using that bit, so that one of the things I miss of the 20 and is really unimportant. But I liked having it when it turned on and said Jim Horn, so that people knew it was mine. And so, then I'm sure that there's many other uses for that too. If we can use a bit to enable that, much like the old set flag 03 or whatever it was, it would, it would be good to have that again. Can you put Jim Horn in one bit? <laughs> um, can squeeze, squeeze, squeeze your name, use a few um, quantum bits. No, um, problem is, of course, you, you, you need to put your name somewhere. To, to display it, oh, you uh, what, you, what you always can do is put it in a flash region. Uh, oh. We do not have an auto start mechanism. Uh, this might be implementable, but you need more than one bit because, or, or you have to, to, to set up defaults so the auto start is always named to program some such, and if it exists and the bit is set, it is executed. That might be a possibility. Just propose us uh, in an email to us or, or discuss it on the forum. I, I would prefer the forum for this. And if, if, if the, the bit is still available, Pauli is working on the project, so maybe we even have lost some uh, steps in the meantime because he used it for something else, so it's a work in progress. I did not understand your first question. Can you repeat it, please? The self timeout where it turns itself off, how long does it wait before it does that? From back in the days of the 60s, 70s, it just almost automatically turns things off if I'm not using them. It's just nice to know that it does so in the amount of time. Yeah, 10 minutes or so? It's a defined in main C, and I have to look it up. It's measured in tenth of seconds uh, to the accuracy of the RC oscillator. Should be in the vicinity of 5 to 10 minutes, but I, I have to look it up in the sources. I defined it. And then I forgot. <laughs> I think it is in the manual, but the manual is quite dense, as you noticed. Yes, we all agree the manual is quite dense. No, I'm quite dense. We'll see which one flipped. And I apologize if I didn't get to that level of the density of the manual, but is there or will there be more serial ports or generic? send a byte out or receive a byte. This has been implemented. It's just the, the debug port on the back of the calculator, which has some restrictions. You don't have a crystal typically installed in your unit, so baud rates are kind of vague. Um, we uh, removed it by a define in the features uh, header file. Um, on request, I can turn it on and send you out a a version with the commands. Maybe if the uh, audience here decides we should have the serial commands uh, in by default, we can re-enable them, but I have to convince Pauli and Walter, and I'm only one person, and I'm late in the project. Uh, what 
what I have done is send out a single character, receive a single character, send out a string, receive a string. The uh, problem is this all eats batteries. So if you want to use the device as a controller, hook something up to the, the backside port which feeds power to it. You can do this. The six pins have a power connection. This is typically used to draw power from the cells to uh, power the level shifter and the cable, the programming cable. So one caveat, don't use the programming cable for any length of time if you are running the device of batteries because the cable itself draws more than the calculator if it is idle. It's a few milliamps just by the plugging in the cable, even if the calculator is off. That was the main reason why we did not include the, the serial commands, the user level serial commands. There are serial commands to put back and forth program code between the emulator, PC, uh, and the device or between two devices if you manage to, to build your own crossover cable. Mm -hmm. Then you can uh, have, you have send commands and receive commands for, for program libraries, program space, registers, and all some such. Thank you. Uh, follow up to that, uh, you said the baud rate is vague. I was wondering uh, what baud rate you achieved uh, and if you uh, saw problems with the receiver, the other uh, endpoint, uh, getting out of sync. The problem is that the accuracy of the RC device is about 20%. 20 yes, and normally it's low on the on the low side. The RC, yeah. and what I what I'm doing is, if this thing is not running off a crystal, you can you, you can uh, solder in a crystal and the two caps. You can turn it on. You need to manually turn it on because there's no way to detect it automatically if it's connected or not. But you can turn it on. Once turned on, you can you can no longer turn it off except by a reset or battery pull. And um, I, I adjust the the multiplication factors of the speed if it runs uh, without a crystal. So the typical execution speed should be comparable between a crystallized and uncrystallized device. Um, so what kind of speed did you achieve without a, without a crystal? Um, I, I running it, I'm running it at 9,600 uh, 9, baud because you have 1k of data to transmit yeah? and it's one second with 9,600 baud so why, why go higher? Um, the device is capable of uh, 100,000 something and Samba uses the higher baud rate. Samba has an algorithm to adjust the speed. So the, the, uh, the, the first steps if you connect, connect to Samba, uh, they are negotiating and Samba on the device constantly adjusts the PLL frequency to, 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 find, to find some that works. So basically it's characterizing the, the calculator for the other end, right? And then using that as knowledge to help you um, adjust, no, no, the, the calculator or, or the PC, I don't know exactly, sends, sends pattern and the other side tries to receive, uh, receive the pattern. If it sees the pattern, it's okay and they continue the communication. Uh, what I have done is, um, if you have a device which has no crystal built in and you want to transfer data to your PC, you can enter in the X register a percentage factor. So if you uh, you have to play around with it, start with 95 or something like this. It's just an integer, 95 or 97 or even 89 or something like this might work for you. It depends on temperature, humidity, and your mind. <laughs> this is not really a question, but it's a kind of a compliment. Thank you for, in your programming, thank you for not counting, like, when you're going into the menus to select a command, thank you for not counting the arrow, the times you press the arrow keys against the number of steps. <laughs> that was a real problem with the 30D, and I'm glad to see that is eliminated with the WP34S. You even have a repeating arrow key. Have you tried to do this? You can hold it down and it repeats. It's just the arrow keys. <laughs> I'd like to make a comment. I just want to make a comment. Um, for people who've come to the last several conferences, you you may realize that many of my talks are a broken record with respect to user optimizing the user interface and I have to say that the first thing that excited me about the 34S was the fact that um, two specific guidelines that I love were being adhered to. One is 
fill up the keyboard as fast as you can and as much as you can prior to putting anything in menus or catalogs to minimize keystroke counts. And the second one is that identifications on keys that take you to catalogs, which would be the analog of taking you to menus on other machines, are marked with an underline so you know that that takes you to, to another place, which I thought was rather convenient. And um, it's, it's a good thing. <laughs> Uh, in the catalog navigation, there are some, some tricks to know. It was mentioned if you know the first letter of the command, you can type it. If it's a Greek, command, uh, a Greek letter, you have to use the blue shift key. If it's a lowercase Greek letter, you have to go to lowercase mode, which is um, yellow shift and um, on before you type it. So it's a bit complicated, but it works. And if you know more than one letter, you can type them in sequence, and if you do not exceed a timeout of a few seconds, you get you will be taken to the next closer match. So if, if you are looking for the send command, type an S, type an E, and you are there. Is that in the manual? Uh, it should be. It should be. Walter, Walter is updating the manually, manual constantly. I agree the manual is not for beginners. And wasn't it you who offered to write a beginner's yeah. guide? <laughs> if, I, if I can get a word. If I can get a word version of the manual, Jake and I will write a beginner introductory manual for it. I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> and even if I had, I, I were not allowed to give it away. Walter is a bit picky about it. A bit. <laughs> 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 it would probably be good if you, did, you ignored Kate's on that search, don't you think? Should be an option, but how do you ignore Kate's on Greek characters? Oh. <laughs> Uh, or special characters like, uh, okay, the summation symbol, or the arrow. Well, where, where, what is an uppercase arrow? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, I think it's basically, you know, like, I can't want that's right. You have to do special code to translate the ones that you put translate. Uh, if we find the space and if it makes sense, we might uh, go that route. Um, it's always an offset uh, or a trade-off between space, speed, and uh, what functions to, to kick out. <laughs> uh, that's one, one, one trick I uh, introduced not uh, only a few weeks ago. Now you can switch between catalogs. So if you, if, you are in a catalog, if you are in the wrong catalog, you have a P function catalog and you want to go to the X function catalog or, or vice versa, you can just use the, the green shift key and the, the other catalog. It, it used to use the navigation feature because on some green keys are some strange symbols. So it, always uh, took you where you didn't want to go. Uh, and I changed that, uh, a bit of a guerrilla tactic against the others. <laughs> but it saved a few bytes of code, so that was. <laughs> uh, that, made, that, that made it make it into the re release we have now. Yeah. I'd just like to say that for many years, ever since I've been coming to this meeting, but probably even before on the uh, HP 48 uh, Usenet list, I've been asking for the log of the gamma function, and I finally now, with the 34S, have a calculator which has that there. So I want to thank you very much for that. I tell Tony. Okay. And then, and of course, the next thing you do is do it for complex numbers as well. <laughs> uh, I think uh, complex, complex gamma and log gamma is implemented. Really? Yes. Uh, you, can, you can count on, on, on Pauli and Walter on this. If a function is there, it exists in all domains which make sense. Uh, it might even be possible to compute a ga uh, gamma or at least a factorial of, a, of an integer. Hmm? <laughs> and, um, so in integer mode, not, not just uh, a, um, a decimal number with no um, non-zero places after the decimal point. And, um, that's the reason why some functions aren't implemented. Uh, Pauli didn't find a suitable algorithm for the complex domain, uh, so he uh, ditched the complete function. So normally, each and every function which makes sense is available in the complex domain too. Just try it out. Just a comment. When I was uh, listening to Richard Schwartz's presentation, uh, he mentioned some limitations to the 35S, and there are so, I think the 34S is a, pretty much a superset of the 35S, and many of the things that he mentioned he couldn't do. 
uh, were definitely doable, I believe, like inverse inverse binomial probability and, and whatnot. Wake him up so he can okay. So in any case, I, I would hope that he would attempt to uh, take, take his work that he's been doing on 35S, port it to the 34S, and see how much easier it is. By the way, it, it, it is the kind of least it returns the value for the complex uh, complex log of the gamma function. Mm -hmm. Try it. Yeah, I tried. I, I tried the log of the gamma of, of, of I. And it did. It gave. Yeah, it did. It gave away. It did. Did, uh, did you try it on pencil and paper? That is correct. <laughs> I didn't bring that paper with the book. <laughs> Have some paper for him. <laughs> Why aren't you cheap? <laughs> three minutes. Three, three, log, turn off is three minutes. Three minutes? Yeah. Three minutes. Yeah. Three minutes. Three minutes. Yeah. Three minutes. Three minutes. Yeah. Three minutes. Yeah. So uh, if three minutes for the turn off is too short, we can we can change it because it doesn't draw too much power when it is uh, idling the system. I put some effort in power saving, but I, I, I'm pretty sure I did something wrong <laughs> because I'm not an hardware expert to the to the um, level of Cyril and Tim. I, I will have a talk with those with these two later about what what I've done, what they have done, maybe. Uh, it results in an even better 34S implementation, or, uh, or they learn from me and use GCC in the next projects. Whatever comes out of it, I'm looking forward. Okay, I've heard about there's eight <coughs> possible, I think eight ports or eight pages of 506 bytes of memory a piece. So it's more, it's more it's a K. So it's that, um, this, the flash of this thing, that 128K is organized in pages physically. A page is a 256-byte area of flash, and that which can be individually erased and overwritten. What I have done is uh, I use four of these, which is kilobyte, to make copies of the program memory. And uh, the number of, the, I call these regions, the number is varying with the m amount of functionality we have in the flash. So whatever is left over is used uh, or is filled by those uh, user addressable regions. And it used to be 11 at the highest point. Now it's down to 10. If we implement the matrix stuff, we will lose another two, I guess. Uh, so it's a, it's a moving target as the, the, the complete project is. So if you are, re so, some people speak of pages in that case, but the page here is not the 256 byte page, the physical page, it's just one of the regions. So I, I prefer the, the name regions for it. I, in my presentation, there's a table with the, with the physical addresses for where it is located, you can look it up. It's in the proceedings. It's in the manual. It's in the manual too. <laughs> Read the manual. <laughs> I was citing somebody. Any, uh, any other questions? If there are no questions and we have some time left, uh, uh, I can show you how to transfer data back and forth between the calculator and the PC if you're interested. Yes. If not, uh, ask questions. I have a question. Will you show me the transfer data between <laughs> Okay, uh, give me a few minutes to, to, to pick up my, my, my Mac <coughs> and show it here, if, if, if it is agreed upon here. Uh, question, what's, what's our schedule? We're, we're okay on time, but, but may push us over. And, uh, <coughs> I'm how, about, how about we do this? Let's <coughs> do that after, during the cleanup phase. Yeah. Well, we can do it at the very tail end. Very tail end. Let's make sure we, we, those we get through. We don't yeah. know how long it's going to take to give away well, all yeah, the stuff. Highly variable type thing we got. So we, we just will we'll do it at the very end. Yeah. Okay, we'll do it and somebody will tell me when. <laughs> uh, be prepared. <laughs> Thank you very much.